it live on camera. <clears throat> so I've got a great uh, question in belief in separation in me and God. <clears throat> so um, whenever there's a belief, you know, whenever the ego has a belief, that in itself means it's a thought. Yeah. Because belief is, you know, thoughts may cross, if you like, may pass by. But when a thought repeats over and over again in consciousness, then it's a belief. It's a, it's a repetitive, or you could say it's a special thought. You know, like, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give an example. Like, if someone had the thought, um, like, the grass is green, or the sky is blue, that's not a belief, because you'd be, you'd be forgotten, and you probably wouldn't have it again for months. But if it's like a belief, you know, like, I, you know, I, I uh, come from an eating disorder background, like I'm fat, that wouldn't be a thought that, wouldn't, that would be unnoticed, that would just slip by. That's a belief. The, the belief in, uh, so the belief in separation or the belief in God creates uh, what's called a dualistic split. You know, there's a me and there's a God in separation. So if, we, if one holds that thought, uh, I, you know, like if I say, I believe in God or I believe I'm separate. So it, 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 it's a mental construct that that presupposes there's a me in separation to a God, or there's a me in separation to otherness, to hold that thought in, in consciousness, or in the infinite consciousness. So as soon as you hold that thought. Now, if you look at um, Hawkins' work, there's levels of consciousness. So if you're in extreme uh, addiction or extreme separation, uh, it is a, a level of humility for someone who's got no concept of God or, di or the divine to say, I pray to God to release me from the bondage of my separated self or to release me from my uh, gluttony or to release me from whatever because that is a level up from like uh, thinking that the ego is the ultimate supreme thing on, on, in, in the universe. So that, it, that, so that actually does work in creating uh, less of a sense of a separation when you go from a very strong ego to actually praying. Like, and Course in Miracles say, like, uh, you know, like one of the Course in Miracles lessons is like, God is the love in which I forgive you. So that's very dualistic. So it's like, you know, God, with God's love, I forgive you. So it cr creates the idea there's a me, there's a God, and a you that's being invoked for forgiveness. But, you know, that's like, of course, in Miracles is, for me, 365 le lessons to enlightenment. You know, like, I think something like the last lesson is throw away the book now. You don't need it. You don't need your thoughts and your concepts any longer. But in the beginning, that's helpful because it's taking you up to a, to, um, to a more refined level of ego. It's not so dense. So it's having the humility to invoke grace or, or God for something. But later, as you're releasing, you know, like, even from the very start of The Course in Miracles, which for me is at the level of pure, pure enlightenment, it says, you know, this is a thing, like, you know, I go to 12-step groups, and, it will, it will, like, you will have, a, like, a prayer, like, uh, I humbly ask God to remove my resentment against you. Please help me treat, you know, God help me treat you with the same patience, tolerance, and kindness, and love, blah, blah, blah. But in The Course in Miracles, it says, all my thoughts are meaningless. So all my thoughts are meaningless. So in, in like in 12 steps, we have it, you know, uh, some of the literature gives the idea there's a me and a God and I'm praying to God to release me from various things within my ego. But as you start to do things at, at that, what I call the more non-dualistic Course in Miracles lessons, like all my thoughts are meaningless. So as soon as you let go of the thought there's a me and you let go of the thought there is a God in separation to me and you let go, also the uh, Course in Miracles asks you to look around the room and say, you know, every, everything is meaningless. You know, this table is as meaningless as this camera, which is as meaningless as the light bulb, which is as meaningless as the flower. Everything is equally, so we're stripping away the meaning from all thoughts and we're stripping away the meaning of the projection onto all objects so that there is no special projection on anything or any thought. So as you start to do this, there is no such thing as a me, there is no such thing as a God, there is no such thing as a special table. There's no such thing as a special relationship. As you strip all the ego projections away, you start to get spiritual experience. You start to get enlightening spiritual experiences. This is not a mental construct. You start to experience the infinite. And then in the infinite, which is the absence 
of the ego, the absence of the idea there is a me or you or there's anything special, is like wiping clean every projection that the ego has had of there's a me or you or that, you know, like, um, I don't know, um, like geraniums are, are more special than grass. That's a projection, you know, geraniums are more special. So if you strip that meaning away, or tall people are better than short people, or whatever it is, or uh, tall trees. As you strip every single thing, you, the, as the ego is stripped of all of its projections, then these spiritual experiences, and the spiritual experience of the absence of the ego. So the idea that an ego is in separation to God, that mental construct, or the ego can filter the world and say some things are more special or better, or, or there's a me in relationship to you. As that gets, gets stripped away, then the, spirit, the infinite spiritual experience or more limitless spiritual experiences start to reveal. And of course, in these spiritual awakenings, it's seen that there isn't a me in separation to a God. These are, start, these are started to, the infinite starts to reveal itself, which, uh, which is the miraculous. Or, but, so that's the difference between using mental constructs, you know, or, but it's a level of consciousness and it has its place. From someone who, you know, who's like, in a complete atheist, there is no God, and I'm the center of the whole universe, and everything revolves around me. To suddenly say, I, you know, I have the humility to say that I'm not the center of the whole universe, and I pray to grace, to God, to whatever, for, for release. That will create less of a sense of separation and a me in relation to other. Because as the ego is more, has more special things, more repressed feelings, the feeling of separation and fear increases. And as one starts to let go, let's go of the repressed feelings, let's go of addictions, let's go of one self-centered thinking, or all thinking, if you like, then this feeling of being, you know, the, the feeling of separation starts to dissipate. And if you start to release the underpinnings of the ego, like all my thoughts are meaningless, like don't even go to your thoughts in any way for any kind of guidance. Like this thought, you know, like the thought passes by, the grass is green, the next thought passes by, I should buy a lottery ticket. You know, it's like, no, don't pick up that thought because you're not going to experience the infinite if you keep going back to listen to what's the next thought. All my thoughts are meaningless, you have to go through it. Otherwise, if there, if, if there is interest in the, in the thoughts passing by, there's going to be a me. If there's an interest or um, identification in the body, there's going to be a feeling of location of a me in separation too. So what you are, what you're identified with now, currently in your ego, will automatically be projected outwards. So if I'm sitting here, like I'm, I am my body and I'm my thinking, if I'm in this level of separation, then I'll automatically project out. If I'm a body and my thinking, then you're your body and your thinking. If I'm the observer and I'm in the infinite, then there is no me and no you because it, you know, that, that is witnessed not to be true. So from the experience, so it's like either people can be, I, I like to liken it like as a, as a metaphor, like someone who's very identified with their thoughts and their body and full of repressed feelings, they feel like they're a very tight cloud. And someone who's let go of a lot, a lot more stuff, they might be like a loose fluffy cloud sitting in the room. And someone who's released everything, all identification with the body and the thoughts, and location, time, is their experiences, they're the sky, or they're the space in the room. So, you, you know, it's like people may come in and there might be a, a tight, little limited bunch, a little limited cloud, seeing other limited clouds in the room, or you might be like a diffuse, fluffy, spacious cloud, or there is no clouds in the room, it's just the space, it's just the infinite sky, and that's all there is. One isn't the, one isn't a cloud sitting in the room. That, and, and of course, the truth, you know, that which observes visualization is not a visualization. So it's beyond pictures and beyond that. It's, um, it's a metaphor. So, um, belief, yeah, belief in separate. And so, does that sort of answer? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.